Today I'd like to show you a couple of slightly unusual transceivers and uh, the rigs that I've used on VHF and UHF. On the left is an ICOM ICF510. That's a VHF transceiver. And on the right is an ICOM ICF610. That's a UHF transceiver. Now these are commercial radios and by commercial I mean uh, they might be used in the marine industry, they might be used um, for dispatch purposes even as taxi radios. But they can also be used for amateur band purposes and I'll uh, put in the captions on this video the potential frequency coverage of these two radios. But um, they can easily be programmed onto uh, the 2 meter VHF band in the case of the uh, 510 which is on the left or the 70 centimeters amateur band in the case of the ICOM 610 on the right. Like anything else, there are advantages and disadvantages of using these type of radios for amateur radio purposes. The main advantage is they're very cheaply available. The radio on the left cost me around 35 pounds and the radio on the right, much the same price. You might notice the radio on the right is missing its volume knob, but it did come uh, complete but uh, it's donated the uh, volume knob to another transceiver and uh, that's, a, that's a different story but both of these arrived uh, fully working but programmed up on uh, various frequencies and they required uh, weak programming onto the amateur bands and that's perhaps one of the slight disadvantages of these radios they are not in any way programmable from the front panel and they need um, the ICOM software in order to program the channels and the various functions of the radios. Now these particular radios are probably in excess of uh, 10 years old. There are more modern equivalents of course and I use uh, a couple of more modern versions in the shack. Uh, there is a short um, couple of videos on my YouTube channel showing uh, those sets in use. But we'll have another look at those again uh, in a minute. But the same criteria applies. Uh, again, those need programming with the appropriate software. Now, the software is generally available to, to download without cost. And anyone that's had anything to do with ICOM amateur radios that are computer programmable will probably think the software looks fairly familiar. It's quite simple to use and we'll take a look at it shortly. But as I say, the big advantage of these radios is they're available quite cheaply, generally to be found on, on eBay. They're very robust, and once they're programmed up, they're very simple to use. They've got uh, good heat sinks on them, they're very solid sets. Very simple at the back, just an antenna connection and an external speaker socket, and of course the, uh, the little uh, tail for the power lead. And at the front, of course, we have a microphone socket, volume control, and all of these buttons here on the front, including the two sets of up and down buttons on this ICOM 510, are programmable, so you can actually choose uh, what you want those buttons to do. And that can be quite useful. It depends how simple or how complex you want your radio to be once it's programmed up. But it also means Again, there's a degree of inflexibility because once these radios are programmed up with the channels that you choose to have, you can't reprogram them in any way from the front panel. So if you're on the radio and somebody wants to change frequency to a channel you don't have programmed into this radio, you're going to be rather stuck. So you need to make sure where you program it, you program all of the channels you need. So let's take a look at the more modern equivalents of these two radios that I'm using in the shack. And then we'll have um, a quick look at the, the software, both for the 510 and 610 that we've got here. And the more modern um, 5022 and 6022 I'm using in the shack at the moment. Although the software is pretty similar in both cases. And here are the two commercial transceivers that I use in the shack. Uh, they look pretty much identical and they are really in terms of their features and their controls. On the right is the um, ICOM ICF6022, that's a UHF transceiver. 
and on the left is the ICOM ICF5022 that's a VHF transceiver you'll see that they're um, in sort of custom housings with a power supply at the bottom uh, power supplies are Samlex uh, branded and I believe the housings are um, made by the same company um, quite often when you see these sets advertised they'll come with the the housing sometimes with or without the power supply obviously it's a bonus if you get a power supply with your radio simple to turn on you just flick the switch on the power supply and we'll turn on the VHF rig I'll just come in a bit closer to it so we can see what's going on and uh, there it is we can um, scan the frequencies as we would do with a normal amateur rig the Slightly more modern ones like this 5022 are a little bit more user friendly for amateur radio purposes. The scanning facilities are a little bit better, and there's actually a transmitter, as you can see, a transmitter and receive LED here, which the earlier models lack. But apart from that, um, the 510 and the 610 that I showed you earlier are perfectly good for, uh, for amateur radio use. Before we look at the software, Let's have a little look at the manufacturer's specifications for the ICOM 510 and 610. And we'll have a look at the later models too. And the first thing you'll notice here is the frequency coverage of the transceivers. The 510, the VHF version, is capable of covering from 136 to 174 megahertz. And the 610, um, you see we've got here 400 to 430, 440 to 490, and 480 to 520. So there's quite a range of coverage and uh, certainly you'll see that the 610 is capable of covering all of the 70 centimeters uh, amateur band, UHF amateur band and for the more naughty of you uh, it would probably also cover a PMR446 and other such channels uh, not that we could use um, a transceiver like the 610 and 446 because the power is uh, far too high minimum power setting is 5 watts and of course it doesn't have its own fixed uh, antenna but uh, nevertheless it uh, would certainly receive there and would be capable of transmitting there if it were legal so we've got quite a coverage um, now obviously as I say these rigs are normally used commercially so it has to have that coverage to cover uh, various uh, commercial frequencies that would be required uh, you'll also note that um, the radios have 256 channels in up to 16 banks 256 channels again more than enough for our purposes as radio amateurs so we should have no uh, problems in uh, you know having adequate uh, memory channels to program up and you'll see again the transmitter has a maximum output power of 25 watts um, these radios have uh, three settings three power settings which I believe are 5 watts 10 watts and 25 watts you've got a little bit of flexibility uh, on the power Let's now have a, a look at the more modern 5062 and 6062. I believe these are actually still current models. These are the radios that I've got in my shack that I'm using on 2 meters and 70 centimeters at the moment. And uh, if we scroll down through the leaflet, we'll see the specifications again. And um, we've got again 136 to 174 on VHF. That's for the ICOM 5062 and 400 to 470 megahertz uh, for the UHF 6062 and this time we've actually got 512 channels available uh, in up to 128 zones so uh, more than enough uh, potential frequencies for our uses um, again we've got um, channel spacing we can have 12 and a half KC 20 or 25 kilohertz uh, spacing um, we've got uh, 25 watts of uh, output power from the uh, transmitter and again similarly we have uh, three power levels on these radios which is uh, 5, 10 and uh, 25 watts out. So that's the, the more modern 5062 and 6062. Okay, uh, this is the software that we use for the ICOM uh, F510 VHF and uh, F610 UHF transceivers should be able to find it freely enough on the uh, the internet um, the radios are quite old now in the software uh, you shouldn't have to pay for this uh, now you'll see 
that we have a number of uh, subheadings in the left hand window here. Um, we'll be putting our frequencies. Um, we have 16 potential banks. Um, it depends how you, it's a personal thing, how you want to arrange these, but personally, I just put um, all of my uh, VHF two meter frequencies uh, in, in one bank. Um, if you wanted to scan different sets of channels, ultimately you might want to put some channels in, in different banks and so on. But um, if I turn a VHF rig on, I put it on scan, I just let it scan through the whole band. So I'm quite happy having everything in, in one bank. We'll just have a quick look uh, at the software now and a little overview of the functions. Um, I'll do another video um, where we'll actually read um, the programming from an existing transceiver and um, update and, and write some new channels into it. This is just a quick in overview so you can see what the software looks like. You'll see we've got um, separate um, receive and transmit uh, frequencies we can input. So um, if you want to use the uh, uh, radio on um, a repeater for example, we don't have to worry about putting in minus and plus splits and so on. We just enter the relevant uh, receive and transmit frequencies. You can set the TX inhibit, which means that the radio will just receive on a particular frequency if you don't want it for any reason to transmit. You've got uh, wide and narrow functions for your uh, deviation. Um, you've got CTCSS uh, tones you can uh, program both for receive and transmit. And the text field here is what will actually appear on the screen of the radio when you're on a particular channel. So if you want, uh, you can put the frequency in here, you can put a channel name, you can put a repeater call sign in there. Um, Compander, I would leave alone, that will affect your um, uh, TX audio, but I would leave that alone. Uh, you can actually set the timeout timer. Your RF power setting, that would be uh, low one, low two or high, so five, 10 or 25 watts. And uh, there's also some scan functions over here, which we'll come on to in the next video. Um, I'll quickly show you the programmable keys. So um, you'll see with the ICOM um, 510 and 610, you have two sets of up and down buttons and you'll see here you can program those into various functions. These are the functions we could assign to those buttons. Additionally, we've got uh, P1 to P4 programmable buttons. And again, we could have uh, memory channels. We can have a lock function. We can have um, talk around, wide and narrow deviation, high, low power, and so on. So we can personalize the transceiver to a certain extent. Um, if you don't want these buttons to do anything, you can just leave them as nil and you press them and the thing will happen. So that's a very quick overview of the software, but you can see it's, it's not too daunting. It's pretty basic stuff. So in the next video, we'll uh, read a radio and we'll add one or two extra channels just to see how it's done. Okay, just to sum up the advantages of using uh, a commercial rig in our amateur radio hobby, particularly the uh, ICOM transceivers I've shown you here, they're available at a relatively low cost, they're very robust, and they've got very good receivers, and uh, they're not going to give you any problem if you're in an area where there's a lot of strong signals around, for example. But like anything else, there's uh, some disadvantages, and... Um, the main one is they're, they're fairly inflexible. Once they're programmed up, there's very little you can alter from the front panel. You're stuck with wh however you set the radio up, so it's important to consider um, the functions of the buttons and the frequencies that you want and so on. You're obviously going to need the programming software. That's absolutely essential if you're going to use it on the armature bands. The radios, they don't have many bells and whistles. You might get a very basic S-meter. You may or may not have an LED for receive and transmit, and that's really about it. And obviously, given the fact that they're in the uh, commercial or industrial environment, sometimes the radios have had a fairly hard life. Although I have to say that the ones I've bought have been in pretty good condition, and apart from needing a bit of a clean-up, uh, there's been no problems at all with them. 
So I hope that's been of some interest. Uh, if you want to have a look at the uh, the software and the programming of the radios, I'll do another a video on that uh, where we'll actually read uh, one of the radios I've got this programmed up and amend some of the programming. You may find that of interest if you're uh, thinking of getting one of these radios. Thank you for watching and I hope it's been of interest. Cheerio.